Right, this thing has finally died. It is looking a little bit wet. Some of those screws have uh, rusted over a little bit there, look. That's not too good. Still, let's bring it inside and uh, take a look. Right, so there we go. Um, <laughs> it's a little bit wet, mind, but we can clear that off. You can see some of these um, screws seem to have rusted over a bit, which is very frustrating. But, you know, I kind of, I didn't not expect it to happen. Uh, it is very wet, it's been extremely wet outside, so uh, it has kept its seal, so there's no water in there. So, let's get it open and we'll measure the battery voltage, because uh, it dropped out at about 8.30 last night. You can see it on the graph here, uh, it was reading around 2 degrees, 1.8, something like that. And I was in the pub, so uh, I didn't do anything about it while it, while it happened. Ah. Let's see how far that rust went down. Okay, so it's just on the top. It's not too much of an issue. It doesn't look like they've uh, actually degraded in too much of a way. It's just tarnished. Ah, that was quite difficult to get out. I'm quite pleased with how long it lasted. I mean, it was less than a month, but um, we didn't do too much to reduce the power consumption. Now uh, we just used the watchdog timer to wake up the ESP8266. Uh, it was running on the ASM1111117, something like that. It's the voltage regulator on the board, so that would have been pulling a little bit of current because it's going through it all the time. What might have been better, uh, and it might be a solution to think about for the future, is to use a microcontroller which has a smaller amount of current uh, in sleep mode. Uh, so perhaps uh, something that can work off the battery voltage. So maybe something like an AT Tiny 85 or something like that uh, and have that wake up and turn on a MOSFET to enable the uh, ESP8266. I'm not sure really, I'm not sure what other people's experiences are with this kind of thing. So I'll do a bit of research and figure it out. Let's have a look at the battery voltage. Now it should have cut out, cut out around 4.5 volts. Ooh, okay. So 2.36 on <laughs> these cells. That means they're absolutely dead. I'm not even sure if they're recoverable. Um, they are pulling out pulling out of where they were before, so they're recovering a bit. So it was drawing current even when the dropout of the voltage regulator had, uh, had gone. So uh, I imagine that's partly the voltage divider would have been um, pulling out some of that current. So even after it finished, it would have been drawing more current. That's annoying. Well, we'll plug them into our charger and see what happens. So let's get these out of here. They are very cold batteries as well. So we're reading just over a volt on that one. Let's measure an individual battery. I know they were all in there at two, but let's see one individually now. They've had a small chance to recover. So that one's at one. 1. 1.09. Uh, that 09 actually matters. And this one is absolutely dead. Now why would that be? These were abs these were fresh batteries. 
Were they all from the same batch? Maybe they weren't. No, they were from all the same batch. Except for some of them. Oh God, they are absolutely frozen. It is, um, it's minus one outside today. Oh, well, no, one, zero degrees, I think. It was minus one last night. So they are very, very cold. But hopefully we can um, recover those. Uh, the, was it this one that's, that's really low? I'm not quite sure what to do about that, whether it will really recover. No, that one's, uh, it must have been this one. That was at 0 0.1. Zero point eight nine, so it's recovering very quickly. Just after a little, uh, little bit of juice from the charger. So let's have a look at the data and see how long it's actually been running for. So here is our data. Um, you can visit this yourself. I'll put a link in the description. And um, it's now stopped working. So it stopped working on the tenth of February at half past eight was the last time it updated. I'm sure it tried to update a little bit more, but the battery voltage just wasn't there for it. So you can see uh, the battery voltage recorded here, and it is wildly inaccurate. I don't, I don't know about the specifics of the ADC on the uh, ESP-12, but uh, it, I wasn't getting the reading I was getting on my, on my multimeter. Um, even if you ignore the fact that my resistors aren't precision, so the voltage divider wasn't very accurate, the, uh, the reading appeared to be around 400 millivolts below the reading that I was getting on my multimeter. Uh, so I didn't adjust for that in software. I just decided to uh, look at that later. But you can see here, we started off at uh, 5.15, but actually I was reading about 5.5 something. Um, so we continue down. You can see it's dropping and dropping. I expected it to hang around uh, the 1.2 region, so 4.8. So when it gets down to about 4.4, this is where I expect it to hold for the longest length of time. These are nickel metal hydride batteries, so they hang around 1.2 volts for a long period of time in their battery life. So you can see it's around 1.2, and then we start dropping off a cliff as we get down to this portion here. So it really does just drop off a cliff here, and we get down to 3.8. Now the temperature worked really, really well. We were recording temperature for a long period of time. Um, let's figure out how long it was actually. So you'll see on the uh, little pop-up text on uh, my readings, we've got count uh, 1,040. So this is reading every 20 minutes. So that's 1,040 of 20 minutes. So let's go to the very last reading, which is 2019 is that? In fact, let's have a look at the data in the spreadsheet and that'll be easier. So this is all of our data in our CSV that we recorded. This is using the little IoT platform that I knocked up. Um, you can use something like Spark Fun's data um, thing, but so the last reading I got was uh, 2020. So let's do some uh, rough calculations. So 220, Oh no, sorry, 2020 times 20. So this is going to give us the number of minutes that uh, this thing ran for. And then we need to divide that by 60 to give us the number of hours. And then we'll divide it by 24 for the number of days. So it was running for 28 days roughly, which is pretty good. Um, that was off uh, the batteries were, let's see. These are 2000 milliamp hour batteries. They might be slightly more than that. I'm not entirely sure. So let's divide 2000 milliamp hours by that. So 2000 divided by 28. So it was using 70, well, it, it won't have used all of the, the available battery capacity that's stated on the batteries. So let's be generous and say 1800, 900, divided by 28. So it was using 67 milliamp hours a day. So divided by 24. So its current consumption was 2.8 milliamp hours. Um, so I would say that that came from the voltage regulator, also the voltage divider, uh, pulling current through those resistors. So that isn't bad, 
but it isn't what I want it to be. I want it to be lower than that. So uh, I've been looking at uh, the current consumption on the AT Tiny 85 when it's in a sleep mode. And this article on Technobloggy, Technobloggy, <laughs> it seems to suggest that um, we can get down to 0.2 microamps, uh, but I'll probably be running on around five volts. So that's, so it will be before the voltage regulator. Um, so we might be able to get down to 0.5 microamps, which would be great. And it means it'll last an awful lot longer. And so we'll turn on the ESP8266 with an 80 tiny 85. I don't think you can get down to these kind of levels with the ESP8266. So we're going to use the AT Tiny 85 as a little helper chip, I think. Uh, possibly. I'm still not quite sure. Anyway, I'm quite happy with the results so far. Um, I would like to make it last longer on four AA batteries or potentially find a different solution. I don't think lithium uh, cells, lithium ion cells or lithium, lithium polymer cells are uh, a very good solution to this because they will get very cold. So I think that uh, will be a bit of a problem for them. So nickel metal hydride batteries seem like a good solution. As far as the code goes for this, it's still a bit up in the air. So um, I won't release it just yet. There's a couple of problems with it. One, reading negative temperatures. Uh, so I've compensated for this in my code here. So this is the code for the web page. Um, let's remind me in four days, whatever. Uh, so I've had to implement a function in here called get minus. So uh, the the DS18B20 kicks out uh, different numbers based on whether it's positive or negative. Uh, and there's a bit that you can detect, um, but I didn't implement this in code. I completely forgot about it. Nothing. It was what temperature was it when I started? Um, we were in, you know, eight, eight degrees in the daytime. So I didn't really think about it going into the negative temperatures. Uh, but uh, you can flip the uh, the float around if you want to um, using a bit of stuff in JavaScript. But anyway, it's better to do it in the Arduino so that you're getting uh, in the Arduino in in your Arduino IDE. Uh, so I'll change that code, and then once we've got our next version, I'll give you the code for the AT Tiny eighty five and also the ESP eighty six six. So I think the next iteration of this, and I'm going to keep going with it because I like the idea. Uh, I think we're going to try and use an AT Tiny 85 to do uh, the watchdog essentially. So it will turn this on. This doesn't need to have a sleep timer at all. So it'll turn on the ESP8266. Once the ESP8266 has finished its call to send the temperature across to um, my server, then it will uh, turn on a pin and tell the, uh, the AT Tiny 85 to turn off the power. So it will just have a single loop. The AT Tiny 85 will go to sleep and hopefully use a lot less current. It will turn off the uh, voltage regulator. I'll use a MOSFET for that, which means the AT Tiny 85 will be running straight from batteries. So we'll be negating the losses through the voltage regulator and also the uh, voltage divider circuit. Hopefully um, we'll try and figure that out so that we have the voltage divider on the other side of the MOSFET. Hopefully that will work um, and we'll see uh, better results. I need some advice from you guys, actually, because I don't know how to do this. The burden voltage on my multimeter is high enough so that uh, I can't read these low currents. It doesn't seem to work. How can I get around that? Um, I know there's a thing where I can put a resistor in and measure the voltage drop across that, but um, I don't know much about it. So if anyone's got any advice on how to read very small currents, so this should be drawing somewhere in the region of uh, 90 microamps, I think, in sleep. But I'd love to know for sure. Um, I just don't have the ability to read it. I can throw it on a power supply, but my power supply is not that accurate. So any advice would be welcomed. All right, thanks a lot.